everyone and welcome back to Studio Lou. So today I'm getting started on the next video in my five things that I've learned from. And today I'm talking about Sunnyside Journals. So Catherine from Sunnyside Journals is one of my favorite journal makers. I love her. I think um, she's a fellow Canadian and I find a lot of comfort watching her 30 minutes of my day videos most mornings. Um, and I've learned a lot of interesting technical skills from her I find her to be um, really like I don't know like she's she's smart she likes good tools she she likes to do things in a way that like they're done you know like there's a right and a wrong way to do something and she looks for that right way <laughs> and so I, I just like her technical skills and so most of what I've learned from her has been very like technical or just really smart tips so I'll now get into a little bit about what I learned so here is number one so number one is how to create a really great curved spine for your book. So when you're using a vintage book, you'll often take the signature blocks out and then you'll find yourself left with this. And if you notice, the, the shape of this spine has a natural curve to it. It's not straight back and forth. So when you take a book apart, all you have left here is a relatively thin, you've got your cover with its book cloth and then usually just a very thin piece of like cardboard there. So um, you need to reinforce that spine with something strong so that you make sure that your book will, um, you know, stand the test of time. So what I use, <clears throat> and it's the same thing that Catherine uses um, on Sunnyside Journals, is in this case four thicknesses of um, old file folder so you get a nice heavy cardstock weight you measure it to be the size of your book <clears throat> and um so this one is the size of my book so you see there's a little bit of space at top and bottom um you can't see the bottom it's a little out of frame this is a large book but what i want is to basically make this spine curve because when you put a straight spine in it changes that natural shape of the book not a bad thing and it's not necessary it doesn't have to be done this way i i do both um both curved spines and straight spines and i like both although i do find that a curved spine is much easier to put into your book because they naturally sort of spoon together they lie together so what i'm using is what Catherine taught me to use basically this is a rolling pin now this is a fancy rolling pin you don't need to use a fancy rolling pin you can use wooden dowel um you know anything that has a curve to it but like a wooden rolling pin is perfect and that's what she uses this wooden rolling pin <laughs> don't get me started so i fell for this whole idea of like getting this very expensive rolling pin with sheep on it because of course i'm a fiber artist and I wanted to make some shortbread cookies with little sheep on them. So I don't know, people probably have different mixed results, but I found that these don't really work that well. The dough either gets all sticky in, in the sheep or it just doesn't leave like a very good impression. So maybe I'm not finding the right dough, but anyways, I think this is a better use for this rolling pin. So the other elements um, that you need to curve your spine on a rolling pin let me just move this out of the way. Okay, are a pair of um, <laughs> pantyhose. So these are just pantyhose, new pantyhose from the dollar store. Um, so let me just open them on up here. Grab my scissors. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Just open up these pantyhose, get rid of this packaging. Okay, so of course pantyhose have two legs, and that is one of the keys to doing this. So you're also going to need two rubber bands. So you basically take the top of the pantyhose and you can you can trim off the excess if there's a lot of pantyhose there which is what I'm gonna do because this is like got a really big top to it um, <clears throat> so then you're just going to take the end of your rolling pin sorry this is a little bit fiddly because it's such a long rolling pin 
um, and you just take the end and you're just going to wrap that waist around your rolling pin and then take your first rubber band and um, make a nice tight seal so as many times as you can comfortably get your rubber band around then you've got your two dangling legs here so the legs actually are part of what controls the balance of the pressure on the spine to make sure that you get a nice curve. So I have my um, my marks here for where I'm going to be making the holes that I'll sew my signatures through. I'm actually going to lay that part down because I want that on the inside. Um, so then you're going to take your spine and lie it down and then you begin just kind of wrapping one leg one direction while hold like really tightly while holding on to your spine and you're just going to pull as tightly as you can and hold the whole thing and you're going in one direction just trying to... there we go Sorry, it's hard to show you the whole thing because this is a really long rolling pin and a very long spine. But anyways, I'll show it to you when I once I get there. Hold on. And you can um, slide it up a little bit if you feel like you don't have enough nylon. And you can wrap it back the opposite direction. Essentially, you just want to try to cover as much of your spine as you can. So there we go. We've got one wrapped. And then I will just um, slip it inside the edge here. And just give it a nice tug. Then the other side, you're going to go the opposite direction with. And um, this one I didn't spread out as much, but this one I'm going to try to spread the nylon out a little more so that I get a really good um, hold. This is done best when I find anyhow, when the glue is still wet from when you have um, glued together those four pieces of file folder. So now I'm just kind of filling in the gaps where I missed um, getting a coverage of the whole spine because I'm trying to get equal pressure along this whole entire spine. Just turn it again here. Okay. All right, so now you take your other rubber band and you're going to put it around the end, the other end of the rolling pin. until it's nice and tight and then honestly I just kind of give it a quick little roll just in case like this one it, it didn't have wet glue when I put it on um, usually the glue will still be a little wet when I do this so that's why I'm just giving it a few rolls. Now this can just sit for 24 hours. Just let it sit overnight and then you will have a nice curved spine. Um, one thing about doing this is you want to, you can actually go for a tighter curve than what you think your book will need because that curve will relax a little bit um, after you put it in the book. It, you won't completely lose it, but it will relax a little bit. Um, and if you want to, where we attached the um, elastic at the top of the pantyhose, you can actually bring that, you can take that off and you can bring it down and actually wrap it again right around the end of the spine. 
because the trickiest I'd say like the, the hardest part to work with with this is that end the the ends of the spine that's the part that doesn't want to train as much as maybe the center so there we go um, that is how you make your curved spine so I will um, capture what this looks like um, when it's after 24 hours okay so here we are 24 hours later with this rolling pin um, spine curve so let's just undo these elastics this one is a little tough <laughs> there we go okay and then we unwind these guys you unwind both of your nylon sides and it's good to unwind these um, and let them rest because they will over time lose their elasticity so uh, not leaving them all wound up like this um, helps to make sure that they last a little longer this one has developed a little knot I think no it hasn't okay <laughs> okay now we unwind. All right, perfect. So there we go. We have a curved spine. So I don't know if you can see the curve there, but it's curved. <laughs> so I'll show you inside how that will just fit a lot nicer than previously. There we go so let's just move it over here a little so you can see so right now you see the curve there that's going to relax a little bit once it is um, fully in the book and uh, yeah that's exactly what we want so that is the curved spine on a rolling pin um, technique that I got from Sunnyside Journals <laughs> On with number two. So the second thing that I learned from Catherine Sunnyside Journals was about making your own book press. And honestly, just the concept of book presses, period. Um, so let me grab my signatures. So for the book that I'm working on right now, um, I haven't pressed these signatures. Um, now they're at a stage where normally I, I would have pressed them already before I did some of this but as you can see it's quite um let me see how I can easier show to you they're quite poofy so once they get pressed in a book press they're going to lay much flatter you'll get more of this so when especially when you're making a book where you're not putting any kind of lace elements or anything like that you're just putting paper it's nice to have a, just a flat lay to the book so that when you open the book and close it like the pages are laying down they're not poofing up so some of the things that can cause your paper to poof or to wrinkle causing like ripples that that add that kind of um girth to, to the size of your signatures there's there's a few factors so one is if you're using papers that have been coffee dyed or avocado dyed or dyed with water in any way, that process causes the paper to stretch and also to slightly ripple. So you will have um, th those things all create texture. Then the other thing that naturally bulks up signatures is when you're putting, say, 10 pages in a signature, you will get, you know, if you have a larger piece of paper that's the same size in the center as one on the outside, it's going to jut a little bit forward and, you know, because it can't because of the girth of the spine in this area where all of your papers kind of come together right there. Um, there's a little bit of natural distance that's going to occur. So that being said, you can get a flatter, nicer... Um, signature set of signatures from pressing so essentially the method is and, and mine's done a little bit differently just because I used what I had on hand but that's the whole thing um, you can actually pick up a couple of wood or bamboo cutting boards from your local dollar store thrift store or you know your kitchen and um, then just four of these 
hook and eye like bolts like so a bolt a washer and then these um these handled screws so mine's a little bit industrial because that's what I had lying around <laughs> and so this is made from like thick wood that we had just kind of kicking around so these um all come off like this um, but I actually don't even take mine off these days because it's less work for me to just um, do this so you'll see on the sides here these are two big thick boards and I can actually um, separate them let me just do that just with a little bit of pressure from something here like a pair of scissors so I can just open them on up um, and then I can slide my signatures. So I'll just grab a couple of my signatures. I'll grab three of them here and I'll show you. You can lay them flat or you can, in my case, I'm just gonna slide mine in because I'm too lazy to uh, take the whole thing apart. But <laughs> so there, now they're inside there. They're wedged inside there. So then as I lay this down and I, tighten all of these clamps until you know you can't tighten them anymore you just bring them all down and you tighten and you tighten you know you just kind of keep going and till none of them will turn anymore and then you leave this for 24 hours and the next day you will have such nice um, compressed flattened papers they get straightened right out and basically like your signature can go from like this wide down to this wide so it allows you to really fit your papers in a lot neater so that is number two <laughs> Number three that I learned from Sunnyside Journals is all about how to create a nice ribbed spine. So um, if you're familiar with like old kind of tomes, um, books from the 1800s, they would often have like ribbing on the spine that was like, you know, textural and, and you could feel it and it would be under the book cloth and it was really nice. So I learned how to do this um, from, from Sunnyside Journals. And like I said before, you know, probably these people have learned this from other people. And that's how the chain of our amazing like journaling community is, is that, you know, you learn from one and you pass it on and they pass it on and like everybody just becomes much smarter. And that's a really cool thing. So essentially I want to put probably five um, ribs down this spine. So what I've got here is some nice thick jute to do that with. Um, and so you're going to use two pieces of jute that are the same length and you're going to be gluing them down on the spine to create that spine bump. So I'm just going to cut this here, take this off and then I'll cut these apart actually because we don't want them to be um, like overlapping and the jute actually it, it's going to need to be trimmed again and it has like a natural curvature to it so let me just, um, there we go. Yep, that's about what I want. Okay, so now we're going to cut the rest of the pieces to the same length here. So I'm just going to use that one piece just to kind of measure the next piece. One. Okay. We're going to need about a dozen of the, or ten of these, sorry. here. Okay. So now I'm going to need my Fabri-Tac glue and decide where I want to put these. So the first one I think will go here. So you want to be a little generous with this glue. So I just have to wait for my glue bottle to wake up this morning. I haven't used this glue yet. Um, so it needs a moment. 
Don't we all? Okay. So then I'm going to put enough glue actually to stick down both of these. So a nice thick double bead across the whole spine. And then you'll see it has a natural curve. So then go with the natural curve and just lie it down. One right beside the other. And then just hold them together for a moment. There we go. And then we decide where we want the next one to be, probably about here. I feel like I just need to start leaving this glue bottle upside down all the time <laughs> so that I don't have these pauses. Once you get to like the halfway point of your bottle being full of this glue, it just doesn't want to, it wants to take its time. I think I'm actually just going to add the glue for all of them and then we're going to work really quickly. This glue does give you a minute, so you don't need to be feeling panicky or anything. Okay. So now we've got our glue for all five. So let's lay this one. Number four. And number five. Okay. So now we're going to just let this rest and fully dry before we move on to the next step. Um, so I will come back once this is dry and do the next step. Okay, so on the most part, this is fully dry. Now next we'll be covering this in book cloth um, or fabric. So this is what I've decided to use to cover this over with. So essentially, I'm just going to make a little bit of a line just under where the ends of this cloth are going to end up. Just in pencil on either side here. Let me just move up a little so you can see. So here and here, I have placed a little line just so I know where my cloth is going to end up. And that's what I'm going to use as a guide to begin gluing. So I'm going to just start the gluing process with Fabri-Tac glue all the way up the book and across the top of the spine and then over and back down. And then you're going to put glue right on top of these um, pieces of jute as well. And also down the sides of both, both sides too, because you're going to be pressing your book cloth up nice and tight to these to really define the edges. Sorry, my glue bottle is very slow at the moment. I need to refill it today. That's on the agenda. My dream is for a bottomless glue bottle that just refills itself. <laughs> Top here, there we go. Now we're in business. 
business. Okay. All right, so that's a pretty good gluing. And now you're just going to carefully lay your cloth on top here. Then just begin pressing and defining those ribs. You want to get all your excess cloth pushed out the top and the bottom. So at the same time you want to try to make sure that you're pulling your cloth to the edge of your glue. If I have a little extra glue that's not a big problem I'll scrape it off after. So this is the spot where it feels kind of like oh is this gonna work? I don't know if this is gonna work. It's gonna work. Don't worry. Um, let me grab my credit card. My old my old credit card then you're just going to really start just pressing and defining these lines this is the most important part of this um, and just smoothing down in between and this is where you're going to start to feel that there your fabric is starting to lie down so as your glue is starting to get more tacky you're just defining again Pressing on top and around the sides of these ribs. And smoothing the credit card in between just to affix that glue down. And again, just defining each and every one of these. Okay. Just getting that last bottom one. Sorry if I'm a little off camera. Like I said, this is a larger book so it's um can be a little tricky okay yeah so this is feeling really a lot more defined now but just keep going in and pretty much until your glue is dry you want to be just defining this as best you can pressing it all down so yeah i actually have decent definition on these it might be a little hard to tell because this is a dark a dark fabric I'm just gonna press my excess glue back a little bit I'll be able to just pull this off like it just pulls right off actually I'm not too concerned it's it's not a big deal Right now, the most important thing is this. I'm not concerned with this book cover because most of it's going to be covered, but you know, just be careful with your glue lines if you're concerned because Fabri-Tac does dry uh, shiny. So if you're really trying to maintain your book cloth when you're doing this with Fabri-Tac, you don't want to go over your lines or you'll end up sort of pulling some color from your book cloth. But again, for me, that's not a problem. I'm going to be covering all of this up. So another thing that um, I've learned is you can actually, rep like if you if you do lose a bit of color from the book cloth, you can actually replace it with a lot of uh, different things. One of which is distress oxide. So um, if you have distress oxide, especially like in this brown color, you can actually use a paintbrush and you can uh, typically fill it in quite a bit. And, and the more you work on it and blend it, the better it gets, but we don't need to worry about that right now. So there we go. This is feeling pretty good. Now I'll bend the book. And do you see what I have here? You see these nice ribs? So yeah, now the book is ribbed and feels more like a tome. So see those ribs? And they feel really good. I can't even explain what it is when you hold on to a book that's been like ribbed in this way, but it's really fun. So anyhow, that is number three. Okay, on with number four. So number four is um, a technique that I learned from Sunnyside Journals about how to try to make um, a really shiny picture a little bit more matte. So 
This is um, a picture that I'm going to be putting on the front of a journal. And actually, another technique that I learned from Sunnyside Journals is just using nice little brads as a decorative kind of bolt for the front of these, like these um, pictures that you put on the front of your journals because it just gives it like a really nice effect. So that's kind of a little bonus technique. Um, so I'm going to be using Matte Mod Podge and um, I'm using it to just try to like dull down this um, this picture a bit because I don't want it to be so shiny. So I'm going to use a nice wide brush actually and I'm going to try not to use too much Mod Podge. So you want to kind of put like a light coating on and normally I would do this maybe before I put these um, brads in but I'm okay with that. It's just kind of the way that I uh, have been filming today trying to make this video and another video about this journal itself so actually we might be okay so again you just want a really light amount of Mod Podge and then just try to go over it a couple times with a nice wide brush like this because that will make sure you don't have a bunch of lines like you've got where you've got too much Mod Podge it will leave streaking so that's what you're trying to do and then you can kind of cross hatch it as well that will also help with the final picture so I'm actually already seeing um, and this isn't even dry yet. It's actually a lot less shiny. Um, my lights are really bright, but yeah, you can probably tell it's not as shiny as it was. So that's only going to improve with the drying process. And I'll probably do two coats because um, it will make it even less shiny. So that is um, a shorter one. So that is number four. Okay, so here we are after the drying of the Mod Podge, and you can probably see how this is totally matte now. This was entirely like super, super shiny. So there we go. That is a great technique for making something really shiny more matte. <laughs> Okay, so the fifth and last thing that I learned from Sunnyside Journals is something called a Dutch door. So it's a little bit different than your standard like real Dutch door where like the top opens and the bottom stays closed. It's um, a technique in paper that's basically become known as the Dutch door. So what it is, so I really like this image right here. So it's a, an interesting opening to a journal basically with a round um, cutout of like something interesting interesting to kind of sneak peek into the journal. So let me just show it to you. So let's get started by making a circle here. So the way that we want to do this um, is with like, you could either use one of these large punches. Um, I need to trim that down a little bit, or you could use like, um, you know, like a, any kind of a circle, and then you could just cut it out with scissors. I'll probably be doing a bit of both here. Um, so let's just see. I think that will get me what I want. Yes, it will. Okay, so basically you just want to get the image that you really want to capture here. And then this punch is really a tricky one for me. So there we go. Okay, I think it sort of behaved itself. I'm not like super in love with the quality of these punches, this particular brand, but it's what I have in this size. Um, so let me just see if I can get this out. <laughs> like I said, not in love with this punch. Um, but you know what? I'm just being too ginger about this picture. There we go. So we're done with that punch. Hallelujah. Let me just put it away. So now I'll get rid of this. And the next thing that we need to do is we need a, another circle that's a little bit larger, considerably larger than this, um, as, to act as a border basically for this. So you can choose whatever size you want if you just want like a small border or a larger border. Um, I'm just going to use this as a guide. And I'm going to stand up over it just to kind of see how I trim this. There we go. So then what I'm gonna do next is the 
I don't have a punch technique of going around this with a pencil. And this is just a jelly print on music paper that I did, um, as I like to do. I really enjoy jelly printing. It's a lot of fun. Okay, so now I have the circle here. I'm gonna do my best to cut it out neatly. I might not be using as much precision with the techniques that I'm showing in this video because I'm trying to do them relatively quickly. Okay, so I had to just take a quick little break to change the camera battery and um, just finished cutting out the circle. So then I just glued the image in the center of the circle. So the sta or the um, not stamp <laughs> stencil that I used for this jelly print is actually really great. Um, to to highlight this because it's got a sort of a concentric circle um, doily motif so it works really well with this image so then the next thing that I want to do to make this um, an interesting um, journal cover is or not journal cover but the first the introductory page to your first signature so this is the page of your first signature so you're going to line up um, your your Dutch door with the edge of your um, your piece of paper. Then just take a piece of masking tape, just a low tech masking tape, just for a temporary, you could also use washi tape, and just line it up right there. So it is basically centered from top to bottom and it lines up with the edge of the edge of your paper. So then what you're going to do is take a ruler and just run it down the center of your circle and draw a line on your paper on either side, here and here. This is gonna represent where we're going to cut. Then you're going to just trim around your circle as neatly as you can with your pencil. You're just drawing your trim section, tracing around. Okay, so what that's going to do is it's going to ensure that we have this background um, still intact, but we're going to be able to then glue our circle down on there and have this really cool um, door type opening. So then you just cut off this excess outer section here. Of the excess and then you can go back um, with where is my eraser somewhere is my white eraser there it is <laughs> everything always hides from me when I need it then just come back with your white eraser or like any good eraser that you have just to erase any lines if there are any left over because you don't want any pencil lines And then what I'm going to do is um, I actually want to just distress this page with my, there it is. Okay. Let's pluck that up there. Okay. Distress oxide. I just want to distress around the edge a little. There we go. 
not necessary, but I just wanted to. <laughs> then what you're going to do um, is you're going to just equally glue that like that. You could also, if you wanted to, you could sit it back a little so it looked like a little, like a, almost like a moon face, <laughs> but I'm going to glue it right to the edge there. Um, so then you just pop glue on the back of your circle. Just going to tear off this gluey page and then I can lie this here. Then you line your circle back up again, making sure that it's the right direction that you want it. And just check the back, make sure that it's neat. I'm also going to ink the back of this too. quickly do around this side too. I'll try not to be too picky because this is just for the sake of this video, <laughs> the purpose of this video. Okay. But just to give you an idea what it would look like more finished, right? So there we go. We now have this cute little Dutch door. So let's say that this is your signature. Um, let me just take off my existing front page and put my second page here. Now you probably want to be conscientious of what your second page is going to be. So, you know, be thinking about what you're going to see through that, that Dutch door. Um, like if you don't like the look of a certain page, like your, your second page now becomes a little bit important to your overall journal. So, but yeah, isn't that a really cute, nice technique? I really love it. And I definitely plan to be now that I I've made this I'm probably going to base a journal around it because it's just such a beautiful image so that was number five um, so this concludes the five things that I learned from sunny side journals and I just want to say thank you to Catherine for being super inspiring um, you know always trying to look out for the smart ways to do things and sharing that with us um, and also like I just really love her aesthetic so check out her channel which I will link in the description if you're interested in seeing someone who has a really cool aesthetic with using mainly vintage materials um, she is definitely like specifically into using um all almost all vintage and um things that she gets from thrift stores to make her journals so yeah check her out and thank you so much for tuning in don't forget to click that little subscribe button and have a wonderful day Bye.